This presentation is brought to you by the Beljanski Foundation. Over 50 years of research towards curing cancer the natural way. Thank you. Wow, good, good morning everyone. My name is Emil Haldi and I'm here to talk to you about autoimmune conditions and heavy metals. So I believe human body is the best machine, the best computer ever created. In fact, I believe human body is designed for us to, for us to be fulfilled and happy. And a healthy body should be full of joy, happiness, love, abundance of energy, and a great desire for great sex, right? <laughs> now that I got your attention, let the presentation begin. All right, I was diagnosed with mercury toxicity in January 2017. And I was diagnosed in a very unlikely way. My wife, Sabrina, and I, we are very much into self-development and growth. And we spent a year traveling with Tony Robbins uh, around the world as his platinum partners. How many of you know Tony Robbins? If you don't, he's a big philanthropist, business mind, entrepreneur, author, just a beautiful soul of a person. And during that time, Tony himself was struggling with heavy metal toxicity. He went public about it. So heavy metal toxicity was on top of my mind. And at about the same time, I started feeling really unwell. I went to my doctor and I said, please test, test me for mercury. And to my surprise, he said, I don't know how. He later realized how to test me. He drew my blood and my levels came back 31 when normal is five. And he called me up and said, Emil, your levels are very high, but to tell you the truth, I don't know what to do with you. And that's an honest doctor, brilliant physician. So at that point, I knew that I need to move on and take matters into my own hands. And I saw a number of specialists and mercury detox physicians. And what was interesting is I got a lot of conflicting information and that information, worst of all, was conflicting with my body. I remember seeing a physician, a, a really popular celebrity doctor in Manhattan here. And that physician has tremendous online presence, wrote books, sees celebrity doctors. And to tell you the truth, that doctor almost killed me. So I knew that I had to become my own doctor. It was two years ago that I started researching, two plus years ago I started researching and diving deep into mercury detox, speaking to the world experts around the, around the globe researching, reading medical journals, leaving known stone unturned. And I came up with a protocol that's working for me. It's gentle, it's safe, and it works. That's why today I feel like it's like my mission to get this information out. I believe most of the world today is heavy metal toxic. We live in the most advanced age, and we love it. Technology today is unprecedented. We couldn't have dreamt what we see today 20, 30, 100 years ago. But like everything else, there is a price. And the price is crazy amount of toxins and heavy metals. In fact, some believe it's 100 to 1,000 times more than it was 100 years ago. That's why I strongly believe that everyone should be tested for heavy metals. So let's talk. Today, we're going to discuss what heavy metals are. Uh, we're going to see how we're exposed to them. What are the health consequences of exposure and who is impacted? We'll discuss autoimmune conditions and heavy metals and how they are interconnected. And we'll talk very briefly about some of the most popular detox protocols. There are so many sources of mercury and I could probably fill five to 10 slides, but let's talk about top sources of mercury exposure. And just for today's talk, I will concentrate on two heavy metals, mercury, which is the most studied heavy metal and lead. What are the sources of mercury? Well, if you're a fish lover, just like I used to be, and you like large predatory fish, such as shark, tuna, swordfish, you're potentially getting yourself exposed to mercury. If you have dental amalgam fillings, those are silver fillings that uh, many Americans have in their mouths, those are 50% mercury, so you're potentially exposed. If you live in an industrial city where they have coal-powered plants, that's exposing you to mercury. Household items, such as bulbs, CFL bulbs, they actually have mercury in it. If you break one, be careful. Uh, over 100 pharmaceuticals are listed on the FDA's website, and they do contain mercury. Cosmetics, Chinese and Indian herbal medicines. If you are getting herbal medications, make sure you get it from a really, really reputable source. Vaccines, even today, multi-dose flu vaccines have mercury in it, and even high fructose corn syrup. Elemental mercury is the most common exposure for Americans through amalgam fillings. Those are silver fillings. That's a beautiful picture of, uh, of amalgam filling. Uh, number of countries such as Russia, Denmark, Norway, Sweden have totally banned it. But today, in 2019, it's perfectly legal and considered safe by FDA in the United States. 
Now, what's dangerous about a, a mercury amalgam, that this small amount that's evaporating from the amalgam filling every day, you absorb it by breathing it in, and it's converted into inorganic mercury in your body, which is the most toxic mercury to your brain. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Please take out your phones and I ask you to take a picture of this slide and go to this YouTube video and see this smoking tooth. This is a 25 year old filling, amalgam filling from an extracted tooth. And what they do, that's a hand holding an extracted tooth. They put it in front of a phosphorescent screen with special lighting and they aggravated the tooth with a pencil eraser and you could see smoke coming from the tooth. The same smoke that we have in our mouth if we have dental amalgam fillings, if you brush your teeth, if you drink hot beverage, if you're getting dental cleaning. Organic mercury, we are all interconnected. Whatever happens in Russia, China, Japan impacts us here and vice versa. A volcano in Hawaii or whatever it may be, a coal plant is emitting mercury into the atmosphere. That mercury is deposited into our oceans. It's absorbed by small fish. Small fish is eaten by large fish, and then even further on by larger predatory fish, such as shark, tuna, swordfish, etc. That's why larger fish, for example, tuna has thousand, thousand times more mercury but the, as the same amount of meat from sardine. So is heavy metal toxicity a real condition? Well, not only it's a real condition, in my opinion, it's a worldwide epidemic. Traditionally, US doctors or healthcare professionals, pharmacists, nurses, physicians, none of us are taught about chronic mercury toxicity in school. But I'll tell you with confidence that long-term exposure to small amounts of heavy metals results in various misdiagnosed or undiagnosed conditions. In fact, many mercury toxicity cases or lead toxicity cases are, are diagnosed as autoimmune conditions. Isn't that crazy? Main characteristics for you to take away, there are two points. It's neurotoxic, affects your nerves, and it's carcinogenic, potentially could cause cancer. So this is an illustration of uh, how mercury impacts body parts and systems and virtually leaves no system untouched. The main symptoms of mercury is that it's anxiety, depression, joint pain, fatigue, drowsiness. These, these are the symptoms that most people complain about. But if you look at the slide, there's memory loss, mental confusion, allergies, irritability, there are cardiovascular effects, such as, uh, impact on blood pressure, weight gain. If you have that stubborn weight gain, I definitely urge you to check your heavy metals. Some people say that they have joint stiffness. Actually, it's one of the more common complaints. Balance problems. Now, this is another that, uh, picture moment. Please take a picture of this slide. This video, the two, two videos here. The first video shows you how mercury causes brain neuron degeneration. This is actually what happens in our head. This is from University of Calgary. This video is pretty scary. And the second video is from Dr. Huggins, who was the pioneer uh, decades ago. He brought up the issue of dental amalgam fillings cause, causing toxicity. Uh, he later lost his license, but we're learning more and more that this, amal these amalgam fillings are truly poisonous to some of us. Let's talk about lead toxicity. It's the most common metallic poison. It's especially dangerous in kids and leaves no system or organ unspared. And there are over 900 occupations that lead to toxicity or exposure. These are some sources of lead, ammunition. If you're a hunter and you like to kill animals and eat them, potentially that lead in the bullets or ammunition could impact you. Auto exhaust still impacts us with lead. Batteries and battery manufacturing. If you're dyeing your hair with darker type of colors, those are heavy in, in heavy metals, especially brown or, or, or black. Lead pipes, if you live in a home that was built prior to 1970, you need to check your water because you could be drinking lead. Uh, we heard about lead paint. Supplements, it's very important when you get supplements, herbal supplements, just like with mercury, with lead, you get it from a reputable source. And lastly, we have traces of lead in our gasoline, even though it's unleaded. These are some of the conditions that may result from lead toxicity really bad, nasty conditions, Alzheimer's, anxiety. And there are documented cases. Tomorrow, when I'm going to be presenting in depth, I will demonstrate to you there are documented cases in medical journals when people detox and their conditions get better or they go into remission. Isn't that amazing? 
coordination loss, depression, epilepsy, fatigue, hallucinations, headaches, libido, multiple sclerosis. There are cases, several of them, quite a few actually, where people detox and MS goes into remission or gets significantly better. Psychosis, psychomotor dysfunction, renal dysfunction, and the list goes on. How do we diagnose metal toxicity? First, you gotta work with a, an amazing practitioner. You have to have a physical, you have to have history, uh, medical history taken, run a number of blood tests, including autoimmune uh, blood work. But when it relates to heavy metal toxicity, especially to mercury, blood work only captures acute exposure because mercury, for example, resides deep in your tissues. It's very deep in your tissues. So blood work will, will not be indicative of mercury toxicity necessarily. There is such thing uh, called challenge tests with DMPS, DMSA, or EDTA. Those are chelating agents. Those are the drugs that pull mercury out of your tissues. Because remember, mercury is stored in tissues. So I had one of those tests, and the doctor administers it to your IV, and then they measure uh, the levels of mercury in your urine, because that drug pulls the mercury out. The test that I like quite a bit is HTMA. It's hair trace mineral analysis. It captures the level of methylmercury in your hair, and also, which is uh, something that's very important, minerals affected by mercury, because min mercury causes what's called mineral derangement. So by causing mineral derangement, we see whether one has mercury, even though it it's not shown on blood work or even in the hair. And I'll show, to you my, I'll show you, uh, to you my hair test so you could see the, how mercury is hiding. Tri test, uh, it's a very interesting and popular test. It's, we collect urine, blood, and hair analysis, and we actually can tell which mercury is it. Is it fish mercury, or is it amalgam mercury? So for those of us who are dental professionals, and you've been in dentistry for quite a bit, and you work with amalgam fillings, I urge you to take your tri test and see if you're exposed to amalgam mercury. And lastly, you could take an uh, uh, observational cycle of a chelator. Take a drug that eliminates mercury. And what some people report is they abs some people feel absolutely great because finally mercury is being bound and excreted, or some people feel absolutely unwell because mercury is being stirred up in their system. So observational trial of chelator is very powerful as well. So autoimmune conditions and heavy metals, are they interconnected? Absolutely. Heavy metals may be the cost for autoimmune conditions in a lot of people. Autoimmune conditions may coexist with heavy metals, but I could tell you with certainty, rarely there will be no connection between heavy metals and autoimmune conditions. That's why it's so important to work with the right practitioner where they look at your uh, full picture, your diagnosis, and obser observational diagnosis specifically, if possible. Now, example of, of autoimmune conditions that may be linked to heavy metal toxicity, and this is mercury, lead, and potentially some other heavy metals, multiple sclerosis, Lyme disease complications. Lyme disease is not an autoimmune condition, but the complications may be. Psoriasis, fibromyalgia, various digestive disorders, thyroid, RA. This is my challenge test, the test that I personally took in January 2017 when I was diagnosed with mercury toxicity. And if you could look closely, I don't know if all of you could see it, but on this slide, my mercury in the urine was 91, normal is three and below. My level was 30 times normal. My lead levels were 19, normal is two or below. So this is January 2017. This is April 2017, my hair test. You could see on the hair, my mercury is still elevated. That's the line that goes into almost into the red. My lead is somewhat high as well. I took the same hair test in March 2018, and you could see my mercury level is almost within normal, and my lead is significantly lower. To the untrained eye, I look healed, but not so. But because if you look on the bottom, remember I talked about mineral derangement and mercury hiding? My minerals are all to that side, right? That means my, all of my minerals are raw, so my minerals are deranged. What that's telling me? That my mercury is deep in my tissue and still hiding. So mineral derangement sometimes is telling us quite a bit. Now, how do we get treated for mercury toxicity? And I could tell you in my research, I wanna give credit to people who've dedicated their careers, yes, careers, decades of their lives, to mercury, mercury awareness, mercury detox, Dr. Dieter Klinghardt, Dr. Cutler, Dr. Shea, there are many others, but uh, I was building on their shoulders. 
and I created with a 3R protocol, a 3R approach. First, you have to remove the toxic source. If you love fish, look at it carefully. Make sure you eat fish that's low in mercury. <coughs> if you have dental amalgam fillings, make sure you get tested and, and, and know that your fillings are not really impacting you as far as your mercury load. If you live in a city or work in occupationally exposed to mercury, you have to change that. If you do decide to remove your mercury amalgam fillings, you have to work with a specially trained dentist who will remove it properly. Because most traditionally trained dentists will just drill it out and you'll get tremendously exposed to mercury vapors when they're drilling it out. So you have to make sure you get a smart trained dentist, safe mercury amalgam removal technique dentist. And there is a website that will guide you. You need to replenish and heal your body before you start removing mercury from your system. Remember I talked about mineral derangement? You need to replenish those minerals before you start moving mercury out of your system. That's zinc, magnesium, calcium, selenium, all those minerals, if you're mercury toxic, they're low. You need to heal and prepare your gut. Very, very important. Support your liver and kidneys so that your body is ready to eliminate this toxin from your system. And lastly, you remove metals from the body by detoxing using chelators and products that will enhance your glutathione production. Glutathione is the master antioxidant and it moves mercury. You wanna decrease your body burden and use every elimination pathway possible, including your skin, by using sonas, because skin is the largest organ of the body. <coughs> Nothing is easy about heavy metal detox. First, you absolutely must find yourself a right practitioner get tested the right way, and then get the right treatment. But the key is getting treated by the right practitioner. Detoxification is a journey. If someone tells you they will detox you in 30 days, I would give you a word of caution. Mercury heavy metal detox takes months and years. In some cases, two, three, four years. But don't let that scare you. Your health is improving month by month. And the joy that you experience as you go forward is tremendous. Your goal is to maintain the quality of life as you are eliminating mercury out of the system and be productive. You must be guided by a, special, by, by a trained mercury de detoxification professional. Can you get hurt when you detox mercury? Absolutely, I was. And I wanna give you a word of caution regarding IV chelation with DMPS, DMSA, with or without amalgams. Although there is a place and time for that, I wanna give you a tremendous word of caution regarding those IV chelation protocols. I encourage my patients, my family, my friends to be the, uh, to be the CEO of, of your health. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to live a happier, happy, fulfilled, he healthy life, you need to be the CEO of your health. You need to be guided by an amazing practitioner, but it's your life, you need to lead it. I have two gifts for you. First. Uh, is my website, hcompound.com. Each one of you is invited to go to the website and take a heavy metal quiz. And we'll ask you some questions there. And based on your answers, we'll tell you what's the likelihood of you, heavy metal, of you to be heavy metal toxic. All right, and the second one, I host a weekly radio program where I invite the best minds in the world to come on my program, talk about heavy metal toxicity and other various topics. So please check it out, it's voiceamerica.com, type in Dr. Emil Haldi or Prescription for Success. I wanna wish you all the best, be happy and healthy.